The simplified triple option approach to battlefield analgesia has three primary goals. One, to preserve the fighting force. Two, to achieve rapid and maximal relief of pain from combat wounds. Three, to minimize the likelihood of adverse effects on the casualty from the analgesic medication used. Analgesia on the battlefield should generally be achieved using one of three options depending on the level of the casualty's pain and the nature of his or her injuries. Option one, for mild to moderate pain, and if the casualty is still able to fight, give two 650 milligram Tylenol every eight hours and 15 milligrams of meloxicam once a day. Option two, for moderate to severe pain, if the casualty is not in shock or respiratory distress, and the casualty is not a significant risk of developing either condition, give oral transmucosal fentanyl citrate 800 micrograms. Place the lozenge between the cheek and the gum, but do not chew the lozenge. Option three, for moderate to severe pain and the casualty is in hemorrhagic shock or respiratory distress, or is at significant risk of developing either condition, give ketamine 50 milligrams IM or IN, or ketamine 20 milligram slow IV or IO. Repeat doses Q30 minutes PRN for IM or IN, or Q20 minutes for IV or IO. Stop when either pain is controlled or the development of nystagmus, rhythmic back and forth movement of the eyes. Ketamine has a very favorable safety profile, few if any deaths attributed to ketamine as a single agent. It is safe to give ketamine to a casualty who has previously received morphine or fentanyl. Remember, casualties should be disarmed after being given fentanyl or ketamine. Document a mental status exam using the AVPU method prior to administering opioids or ketamine. For all casualties given opioids or ketamine, monitor airway, breathing, and circulation closely. The fentanyl lozenge saves time because it does not require IV or IO access. It is very fast acting and works almost as fast as IV morphine. Remember, do not chew the fentanyl lozenge, let it dissolve. As an added safety measure, we recommend taping the lozenge on a stick to the casualty's finger or utilizing a safety pin and rubber band to attach the lozenge under tension to the casualty's uniform or plate carrier. Reassess after 15 minutes and add a second lozenge in the other cheek as necessary to control severe pain. Continuously monitor for respiratory depression. IV morphine is an alternative to oral fentanyl if IV or IO access has been obtained. Give 5 mg IV or IO, reassess in 10 minutes, and repeat dose every 10 minutes as necessary to control severe pain. Continuously monitor for respiratory depression. Naloxone, 0.4 mg IV or IM, should be available when using opioid analgesics. Both ketamine and OTFC have the potential to worsen severe TBI. This must be considered in the analgesic decision, but if the casualty is able to complain of pain, the TBI is likely not severe enough to preclude the use of ketamine or fentanyl. Ondansetron 4 mg can be given every 8 hours as needed for nausea or vomiting. It can be given as a 4 mg oral disintegrating tablet that quickly dissolves and is swallowed with saliva. It can also be given as a 4 mg slow IV IO push or as an IM injection. Each 8-hour dose can be repeated once at 15 minutes if nausea and vomiting are not improved. Do not give more than 8 mg in any 8-hour interval. Oral ondansetron is not an acceptable alternative to the oral disintegrating tablet formulation. Promethazine is not recommended by COTC. Aspirin, Motrin, Toradol, and other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medicines, other than Mobic, should be avoided while in a combat zone because they interfere with blood clotting. Aspirin, Motrin, and similar drugs inhibit platelet function for approximately 7 to 10 days after the last dose. You definitely want to have your platelets working normally if you get shot. Anybody who might be going into combat in a week or less should never get aspirin, Motrin, or similar drugs. Mobic and Tylenol do not interfere with platelet function. This is the primary feature that makes them the non-narcotic pain medications of choice. The contraindications for morphine and fentanyl are hypovolemic shock, respiratory distress, unconsciousness, and severe head injury. 
Do not give morphine or fentanyl to casualties with these contraindications. You can kill your casualty if you forget these points. Ketamine can safely be given after a fentanyl lozenge. Some practitioners use benzodiazepine medications such as midazolam to avoid ketamine side effects, but midazolam may cause respiratory depression, especially when used with opioids. Avoid giving midazolam to casualties who have previously gotten fentanyl lozenges or morphine. You can kill your casualty if you forget this. In summary, use the simplified triple option approach to battlefield analgesia. Remember the contraindications and dangers with each option and combination. The goal is effective pain control without causing harm.